everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris, it's my shop partner Oots, and today we're gonna to be building some proper heavy duty breadboard ends. One side I'm gonna make with just hand tools, the other side I'm gonna use power tools. So it should be a really cool video, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a knife line that's four inches from each side. The breadboards are six inches wide and I want my tenons to extend four inches into the breadboards to ensure an extremely strong and supported breadboard end. Creating the knife wall will help ensure that I don't get any tear out when I begin cutting away the waste later on. Now I am marking on my breadboard ends the width of the tongue and groove and tenons using a 3 quarter inch chisel. I want this the same width as the chisel because it makes chopping out the mortises later on easier and more accurate. Then I'll take a marking gauge and set it to those lines I just made then I'll transfer those dimensions over to the tabletop. Hey, what? Watch out! Now that I have everything laid out, I can begin cutting. Here I take a straight board and I clamp it just shy of my knife wall and I use this as a guide for my crosscut saw. This actually works really well and it helped my saw remain perfectly square. It also helped prevent the saw from jumping out of the kerf and scarring up the tabletop. Once I've cut down to depth, I take advantage of the wood's grain orientation and I actually split out most of the waste. At first I tried using just a regular bench chisel, but it was a little bit too small. So I grabbed this big slick that I just recently got at a flea market. It's pretty beat up and needs a new handle, but I put a quick edge on it and went to town. It actually worked really, really nice. So now that I've removed the bulk of the waste with the chisel, I'm going to take my shoulder plane and cut down to within about a sixteenth of an inch of my final depth. Then I'll take a scrub plane and remove the rest of the waste down to about a sixteenth as well. Now that I'm within a sixteenth, I'll take my router plane and set it to the final depth and I'll remove the waste closest to the shoulder first. If you don't have a shoulder plane or a router plane, there's a lot of great videos and instructions online on how to make some and you can build some just like I did here. It's actually a lot of fun using tools that you made yourself and I use these any chance I can. Then I'll take my number six plane and remove the rest of the waste down to the final depth as well and also ensure everything is nice and flat. The reason I use a shoulder plane and a router plane first is because a regular bench plane's blade doesn't extend the full width of the plane's sole. And so I would never be able to get down to depth right next to the shoulder. Earlier when I was cutting to depth with my crosscut saw, I left myself about a 30 seconds of an inch just in case I screwed something up. And so what I'll do now is take a shoulder plane and sneak up on that 30 seconds just until the knife line disappears. I used that chisel at the very end so that the shoulder plane didn't blow out the fibers at the end. Next I marked out all of my tenons. They're going to be 4 inches wide and there's 5 total. One for each of the boards I used to laminate the top together. I am also not cutting the tenons all the way to the shoulder. I leave 3 quarters of an inch, which will serve as the tongue and groove, also sometimes called a haunched tenon. This gives the breadboard end an incredible amount of strength and support, and also prevents the tabletop from ever wanting to warp. The reason I'm going 3 quarters of an inch for the tongue and groove is because that's the max depth of my plow plane that I use later on. 
I use a fret saw to cut away the waste here on the inner pieces. After everything is cut out, I'll chamfer the edges and corners a little bit, and this just helps the tenons slide into the mortise and prevents anything from jamming in the corners. Now I'll move on to the breadboard end. I set this Stanley number 45 plow plane with a 3 quarter inch blade and set the fence to the proper width and begin cutting the groove. If you don't have a plow plane or one you can borrow, like I did, you can actually chop the entire groove using a 3 quarter inch chisel. It sounds like a lot of work, but if that's your only option, you definitely can do it. Now I'll take the breadboard over to the table and lay out where the mortises will be. The center mortise will have a nice snug fit, but the four outside mortises will have gaps on each side to allow the tenon to slide back and forth as the table expands and contracts with seasonal weather changes. Once I have my mortises laid out, I'll take a bit and brace and bore out the majority of the waste. Then I'll take my chisels and chop out the rest of the waste going down the full four inches. Here that big slick came in really useful again. Hey guys, I just wanted to ask if you haven't already or are new to the channel and like what you're seeing, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. So thanks so much. I know, I know this is a power tool, but unfortunately the 3 8 bit in my bit and brace set is actually a little bit too big and so when I put a 3 8 dowel in it it shows an unsightly gap. That's why I'm using a newer bit in the drill press that way I'll get a nice tight fit. Now I'll install the breadboard on the tabletop and then I'll use a brad point drill bit to make a mark on the tenons of the tabletop. I then take the breadboard back off and move that mark around sixteenth of an inch towards the shoulder line. This technique is called draw boring, and what it does is offsets the two holes, and when you drive a dowel through them, the joint actually will pull itself together super nice and tight. This technique can be used on almost any mortise and tenon joint, but it's perfect for the breadboard because you cannot glue the outer tenons, and therefore the dowels will provide that strength and keep the joint remaining nice and tight. Again, I'm sorry for using a power tool on the hand tool side, but my bit and brace just aren't the right size, so I'm kind of forced to. Before I install the breadboard permanently, I'll take a round rasp and widen the holes on the four outer tenons. This again is to allow the tabletop to expand and contract without tearing itself apart. I decided to add a small chamfer to the edges of both the tabletop shoulder and the breadboard to help highlight the breadboard end. I was debating whether or not to do this, but I'm glad I actually did. I think it's a nice touch once the two pieces are put together. You'll be able to see this effect a little bit later on. I took a spoke shave and whittled the ends of the dowels a little bit. This will help them go through the offset draw board holes. Here you can see the gaps on the sides of the mortises and the elongated draw board holes that will allow for that seasonal movement. Now it's time to permanently attach the breadboard. I'll use glue on the middle tenon only. This will allow the wood to expand and contract out from the center of the table. If you were to glue the entire end together, the table would almost inevitably crack and tear itself apart with seasonal humidity changes.
Once I pound the breadboard onto the table, I will drive the dowels into their holes. Clamps aren't needed as the draw boring will actually pull the joint super tight together. Then I add a little bit of glue to the peg and tap it a little bit farther down so that it becomes glued to the breadboard. I don't want the dowel to become glued to the tenon, just the breadboard. While the glue dries on the dowels, I will cut the breadboard flush with the side of the table. Again, I'll use a piece of scrap as a guide for my saw so that I get a nice flush and perfectly straight cut. Once my saw kerf is deep enough, I'll remove the guide and finish the rest by hand. You definitely don't need to clamp a scrap piece for a guide to get nice straight cuts, but it sure makes it a lot easier. Now that the glue is dry on the dowels, I'll take a Japanese pull saw with a piece of paper to protect the tabletop and cut the dowel off. I get questions a lot about the tools that I use, so in the description there's a link to my website where I have a whole list of all my favorite tools that I love and recommend, so feel free to check that out. Now I can just easily plane the rest of the dowel flush, and this side is done. The hand tool side turned out great and I'm really happy with it. You can see now the nice effect from when I added those chamfers and how it accents that breadboard end. Now onto the power tool side. I'm going to start by setting the depth of my circular saw as it sits on my straight edge track. I then clamp the track to the table so that it's just shy of the knife wall that I made earlier. I make my first cut using the straight edge track, then I remove the track reset the depth to just shy of the final depth, and then I make several relief cuts. Here I'm breaking rules again and using hand tools on the power tool side, but what I'm doing is taking a chisel and knocking out the first three rows of these relief cuts. Then I'll take my router, which is set to the actual final depth, and flatten that first section. Once I flatten that first section, I'll repeat this process until I get all the way to my four inches. Doing it this method is actually a lot faster than relying just on the router to remove all that waste. Now I need to cut away the waste to create my tenons. I use a jigsaw here and because my jigsaw can't quite reach the end, I use a piece of scrap to prop it up and finish the cut. Now there are probably dozens of different ways to cut breadboard ends. I'm not saying this is the only way or the best way. These are just some of the tools I had at hand and the method that I use. Now that the tenons and tongue are cut on the table side, I'll move to the breadboard end. All right, so I took a marking gauge and I used the marking gauge to set the depth over on the table part so I know exactly how far down from the face I need to have my router go. So I used that to transfer the line to this breadboard end. I set my router fence to that distance and I also set so that it'll eventually plunge and multiple steps down to the right depth, so let's give it a go. If this board were any more narrow, I would probably want to clamp another board to the side of it to help support the router, but being that this was two inches wide, it was actually pretty stable, and so I didn't have any problems. Thank you. 
Now I'll basically do the same thing as before and drill out the bulk of the waste and chisel out the rest. I tried thinking about how I could do this without using a chisel, but I couldn't think of anything. So if you have an idea on how to get a 4 inch deep mortise with just regular affordable power tools, please let me know down in the comments section, I'd love to know. I used the drill press again to drill holes in the breadboard ends and then I made my marks on the tenons for the offset drawboard holes. And the same as the other side, I just take a rasp and I elongate the holes on the outer tenons. Now it's time for the fun part again, get to pound the breadboard end on and drive all the dowels home. If you look closely you can see as the dowels ramp off those offset holes. Well everyone, there you go. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I think these breadboards turned out awesome. I had a lot of fun making this video. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leave any comments you have down in the comment section. I really appreciate all that kind of stuff. So until next time, have a good one guys.